Hello, today we're going to prove the cancellation of dots. So this basically says that the partial derivative of r dot with respect to q dot is equal to the partial derivative of r with respect to q. So r is some general function and what we're doing is we're taking the partial derivative with respect to its coordinates, its generalized coordinates. So basically it says if we take the, uh, the derivative, the time derivative of r, we get r dot, we just differentiate q to get q dot. So it basically says the partial derivative of the time derivative of these two will simply equal the partial derivative of its position divided by its coordinates. So you basically just cancel out the dots. Okay? The partial derivative of velocities is equal to the partial derivative of uh, displacements, basically. Okay? So we're going to prove that. So first of all, let's set up uh, the transformation equations for R. Now, R is our position, okay? Now, for a holonomical dynamical system with n degrees of freedom, like we did in deriving Lagrange's equations of motion, we can therefore get the transformation equations of Q1 going to Qn, okay? And then time, okay? N is, of course, the number of degrees of freedom we have. So that's the transformation equations for the uh, your position, okay? So we can differentiate this to find the transformation equations for our velocity, okay? So r dot, first of all, let's just, before we write the transformation equation, let's just differentiate this, okay? And when we do so, we're going to have i equals 1 to n, Okay, just sum the, um, uh, the displacements. So we're going to get the partial derivative of r with respect to uh, qi. So we just use the multivariable chain rule times the rate of change of qi. And then we add the partial derivative of r with respect to t. Okay, so we just differentiate uh, with respect to its components, and that's r dot. Okay. So... What can we do now? We can actually uh, write the transformation equations for our velocity now. Okay, so we've got our r dot, so therefore we can write the transformation equations as this. We're going to have our displacement, and we're going to have our velocity. That should be 1, that should be n, and then we have time. Okay, we have components of displacement, velocity, and time. So that's the transformation equations for our velocity. Right, very good. So first of all, let's differentiate this. Let's call this equation 1. Okay, differentiate equation 1. So we're going to get the rate of change of r dot with respect to time. So differentiate with respect to time. Okay, so we have i equals 1 to n. Right, so all we have to do here is use the um, product rule for derivatives, okay, in this case. So, partial derivative of, sorry, sorry, taking the time derivative of this partial derivative. So that's simply going to give us the partial derivative of r dot with respect to qi, multiplied by q dot i. And then the product rule says we then leave this constant and we take the derivative of this. So we get par uh, partial derivative of r with respect to qi times q double dot i. And then, of course, we take the time derivative of this partial derivative that gives us r dot. Okay? Good. So that's the, uh, we call that 1 prime, shall we? So that's the time derivative of this velocity. Right, good. Now, let's do something different. Let's instead differentiate the transformation equations. They should give us the same result, right? Because they're both in uh, they're both velocity. This is just written as a transformation equation. This is just written as a more explicit form. So if we differentiate our transformation equations, okay, dr dot by dt, you see we're going to get something slightly different. So let's sum our dimensions. Okay, good. 
So, differentiate uh, r dot with respect to its position first. So, r dot with respect to q i, and then go to change of q i. Okay. And then we add the partial derivative of r dot with respect to its velocity. So that's q dot i. Okay, each component. And that's, of course, the change of q uh, i is q double dot i. This is just the multivariable chain rule. And finally, we add the partial derivative of r dot with respect to time. So basically taking the derivative of r dot with respect to its components. But when we differentiate equation 1, we see we have it in terms of r. We see? Can you see the pattern? The, those are r dots. Those are r dots. But look. They have to be equal. Of course, these are the coefficients of q double dot i. So these two partial derivatives have to be equal. Since these derivatives are equal, we're simply, all we're doing is we're finding the exact same thing, but we're just differentiating the transformation equations, or we're differentiating our velocity that was derived from this transformation equation. As you can see, they should be equal, but if those are equal, we can see, well, first of all, if we subtract them, we just see they cancel out. They cancel out, and therefore we find a pleasing result in which it proves the cancellation of dots. These have to be equal because these two derivatives are equal. Okay, so as you can see, just cancel out the dots and they're exactly the same. So I encourage you to actually do some examples using this formula. Uh, you can go back and watch my video on the derivation of Lagrange's equations where I actually use the cancellation of dots to, I think it was to cancel the partial derivative of our kinetic energy. And it seems to be a very useful tool for deriving them. So I hope that was helpful. It's a neat tool in calculus and I actually just came across it. So I hope that helped and I'll see you in the next video.